it's a male dominated profession. So women are scared to take that step, maybe thinking that they're not able to do it, but you can do it if you have that right mindset. It's a mindset the Metro Police Department hopes more women will have. Their goal, a 30% female police force. Last year, it was 11%. This year, it's 13%. And is it even attainable? I think we're definitely growing. So if we can just keep that momentum going, um, I believe that it is definitely attainable. Commander Tiffany Gibson is Metro's first female director of training. She says among the biggest changes they've made to help attract recruits, especially women, <sighs> no more physical ability tests. Now trainees must pass a physical agility test designed to mirror tasks in the field. They've also added lactation rooms for nursing moms to all eight precincts, more flexible schedules. That's in addition to their already paid maternity leave and sick time. What's something the Metro Police Department does not currently offer to female recruits that you think could really be a game changer? We were trying to get going, um, possibly help sponsor our own child care facility. And I think that would be really helpful for, for you know, females. New officers like Emma Long hope it all leads to more women joining her on patrols and beyond. More qualified and strong women to be in this police department and be leaders in this police department. I mean, I think it'd be a great thing to see. In Nashville's police department, there's a notable concern among female officers regarding the decision to eliminate physical competency testing requirements. These alterations pose a threat to the established standards of law enforcement, potentially compromising both the effectiveness and safety within the force. The argument contends that relaxing physical fitness criteria could have adverse implications for public safety, given the inherently demanding nature of police duties. Moreover, it could be interpreted as a prioritization of diversity and inclusivity over competence and proficiency in your performance. It's imperative for citizens to advocate for the production of female officers, efforts to entice more women into law enforcement. By downplaying the experiences of female officers and department heads may inadvertently undermine the profession's integrity. Is lowering standards truly the most viable solution to address gender disparities in law enforcement? History suggests otherwise. The primary duty of the police force is to ensure the safety of citizens. If one's physical capabilities fall below those of an average middle school student, there's a legitimate question regarding their suitability for a taxpayer-funded role. Failure to uphold stringent standards and instead focus solely on increasing female representation, risks, perpetuating systemic social discrimination, and fostering a culture of preferential treatment which undermines the principles of meritocracy.